character of a once powerful man now rests in the hands of a Hamilton County judge. The securities fraud case against ex-state representative Peter Beck has wrapped up. His indictment followed a local 12 News investigation. Rich Jaffe broke the story and is the only reporter who has followed the case from start to finish. He's in the newsroom now with new information. Rich? Cammie, this trial, our investigation, and the state's investigation are all about holding the powerful accountable. After 10 weeks of trial, Judge John Andrew West tells me he plans to have a decision by next Tuesday at the latest, which is pretty amazing considering there are thousands of pages of evidence. A quick decision is possible because the judge has paid phenomenal attention to the details. Here's an example of what we heard today. As investors who lost their life savings to what the state says is a massive securities scam, Tom Walter and his wife Tina have listened carefully for the last two days to the closing arguments from both sides. Today the judge gave some subtle indications how he's leaning on some of the charges. The counts dealing with securities are pretty cut and dried. If you believe the testimony of the Walters and Brang, uh, Prangley, Bolden, and if you believe he said these things, then you've got a violation. The Attorney General's prosecutors say Beck was part of the scam that built investors out of millions of dollars in an attempt to buy himself a more lucrative future. He earned a good salary for Donahue, Cup and Beck, but the prospect of fortune is what he was, he was looking for, and, and that's as CFO of Christopher Technologies. But Beck's attorneys continue to assert, as Beck said in our exclusive 2012 interview, that he's actually a victim and not really the chief financial officer for the scam company Christopher Technologies, even though he acted and represented himself as such. Mr. Beck was never properly elected or appointed an officer under Ohio law. Beck's attorneys say all the investors, like the Walters and the now guilty co-conspirators, are really responsible for the losses. They say similarities in multiple testimonies are also suspicious. However, the lead prosecutor sees it differently. You remember when you get screwed. And they remembered when they got screwed. They remembered when the defendant lied to them and how he lied to them. Now, Beck's attorneys say he was simply hired to do an accounting job for a startup company that didn't make it, but over and over again people have testified that they invested because of his position and power. Today prosecutors also asserted that Beck actually bought his position as the head of the Ways and Means Committee through political contributions using money from the jilted investors. On Tuesday at 10 a.m., we will see which version of all this the judge buys. And just to be totally accurate here and to give credit where it's due, a reporter from the Dayton Daily News, Mike Pittman, has also been in that courtroom day after day after day. We're the only two that have been there covering it from start to finish. In the newsroom, Rich Jaffe, Local 12 News. Cammie? All right, Rich, thank you. Pete Beck is facing 38 felony charges, which could potentially send him to, send him to prison for a long time if he's convicted. One of those, a racketeering charge, is extremely serious and carries a mandatory minimum penalty of 10 years in prison.